Welcome back. The Internet of Things may empower businesses, but it has its risks. With IoT, more and more devices are being connected to the cloud. A cloud is a network of remote servers that store and process that data. Now, this exposes IoT devices to potential cyber attacks. Now, to look deeper into this, we have Darren Roos in the studio. He's the CEO of global enterprise software company IFS. Now, Darren, there's been a rush to the cloud, and companies are storing their data more on that cloud. They're no longer on their own network, so has cloud security kept up with the increased use? So yes, it has. It definitely has kept up. I think that there's uh, a lot of uh, maturing in the understanding of where the real risk is. And I think that it's important to understand that, you know, by and large, uh, when we think about the way things have changed and the way we're storing data in a, in a private environment versus in a public cloud environment, in a private environment, you really might just have a couple of security experts, whereas at a technology vendor ourselves, we would have way more experts than what a, a single company would have anyway. So that, that, that risk is, is, is there, it's real, but certainly uh, a, a large cloud vendor's ability to mitigate those risks is, is certainly greater than any individual company, which is how it would have been in the past. Now, when you look at all of this, what are the biggest risks in cloud security that you face specifically? Yeah, look, I, I think that uh, you know, our, our risks are the same as anybody else's risks. Uh, it really relates to a data breach, and we see examples of that uh, globally today. Uh, with, with, with data breaches, and I think that is the big fear that people, that people have. But obviously, you know, as a, as a customer, as a, as a company, when you're looking for a, a cloud vendor to deal with or a company to deal with, you want to pick somebody who has a good track record, uh, somebody who has the expertise to do that. And obviously, there, there are big companies and small companies and good companies and not so good companies, and I think it's really about uh, a customer choosing the right kind of company to do business with. But I don't think that that's changed vastly uh, either. But I think that, you know, there are different types of risk, the data breach is one, um, but then there, you know, there are obviously being able to, to trust the vendor that you're dealing with not to use the data in a way that you didn't intend, and you know, we have good examples of that with social media companies and the press at the moment. Yeah, and you know, when you look at Internet of Things, which really connects different devices, it's seen as the next big thing, and we have an idea of what will look like in homes, but how can companies adapt, adopt IoT? Look, it's not dissimilar. I think in homes what you see is you see people looking for very practical ways in which they can make their lives easier. Um, and we see next generation, uh, you know, um, appliances in the home. And I think we see the same thing in the workplace. So, you know, as IFS is an example, we have a number of customers in the oil and gas space in, in uh, you know, various industries where they're connecting their assets and, and devices to their core systems. And as an example, uh, you know, we have a company called uh, um, Antisemics who do pest control. And rather than sending out um, uh, con uh, workers, uh, field service people, to go and check all of the, the pest control traps every day. They have uh, sensors in each of the devices which trigger when they need to be checked. So that's an example of how, in a work environment, IoT becomes uh, a real way to become significantly more efficient. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier about how data in the cloud can be used for other means. How prevalent do you think this is in, in the industry today? Look, I think that uh, you've got to pick the right kind of vendor, like I said. You want to pick somebody who, who you have a trust relationship with. Um, and, you know, what you want is you want somebody who, if, if, if the data is being used, um, that it's being used responsibly. Um, and that, you know, and, and that could be good. You know, as an example, we see a big move towards artificial intelligence now where we're able to automate processes. And that's only possible because of the data that we have. But we leverage that to anonymize the data and then be able to look at how lots of different companies are doing things so that we can look for repeatable processes to automate uh, things for, for, for the businesses that we deal with. So I think it's just about how the data is being used that's important and making sure that it's being used in a way that, that you intend for it to be used. And that's relevant whether it's in a personal context or in a business context. Yeah, and that doesn't get any easier, does it? Because especially as a, as a consumer, as a person, how can we ensure that our data is used in the way that we intend it to? Look, I, I think that you know, the examples in social media at the moment are probably a good indicator of that. Uh, IFS is a company that's been around for 30 years. We have a great track record. Uh, we haven't had issues with this kind of thing in the past. And I think that if you have a company that's been around for 30 years and doesn't have a track record of doing it, then that gives you a good leading indicator of what they're going to do in the future. Whereas, you know, if you're dealing with a company as, a, as an individual or as a, as a, as a company uh, that has, uh, you know, not had a good record, track record of looking after your data or the way in which they use it, then you should be concerned and act accordingly.
And there's been this big push for digital transformation in many yes. companies. How does IF, IFS, which has been around for many decades, as you mentioned, compete with smaller startups in enterprise software development? So look, we, we work a lot with startups. I think for us it's really a case of trying to figure out how we help our customers to make that leap. The, 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 the world is becoming increasingly small and you see smaller companies being able to compete with much bigger companies uh, and we see that in our customers. So what we look to do is to try and leverage uh, you know, the technology that's coming out of startups in order to supplement what we've got so that we're able to offer our customers the latest and greatest innovations. And I think finding that balance between robust, secure, um, proven technology with the, the latest and greatest innovations that are coming up I think are important. So for us we see that ecosystem of, of startups you know, doing really great innovative things as a good way to supplement what we do. So it's, it's a collaborative relationship. All right. Thanks for that, Darren. Darren Roos there, CEO of IFS.